Okay. Let's be fag. I have to track the progression of this with you guys. We'll probably put them on a pretty good weight loss diet here. Cool. Hey guys, today we are at the veterinarian with Unit the Snapping Turtle, and we're going to show you what's going on with him, but not before we take care of some other things first. So last week, we introduced to all of you Unit the Common Snapping Turtle. He was fed an improper diet for more than a decade, so he is morbidly obese and potentially very unhealthy internally. So where I'm gonna take you right now is a place that you are able to find the right food items to feed not just snapping turtles, but any reptile or amphibian. Come on. Welcome to Major League Exotic Pets. This is my buddy, Alan. We've known each other for a long time. And the reason why this place is special is because this is your mom and pop reptile supply store. Also a lot of captive bred reptiles among other pets available. But this is where you can get those crucial food items, particularly live food items that are so important to enriching a reptile's life and an amphibian among other animals. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay, so if you're in the Howell, New Jersey area, right here on Route 9, this is where you want to come if you keep anything from a ball python to a bearded dragon, a turtle, a tortoise, a mantella, a dart frog, an invertebrate, you name it, this is where you want to come to get everything you need. This store is beautiful. Thank it's, you. It's immaculate. You guys have done an incredible job so far. And what I kind of want to do today is, like I said, pick out some live feeders. Okay, well, pick we your, have them all. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe pick your brain a little bit about why certain ones are better or why a wide variety of them would be good for Absolutely. All right? Yep. Cool. Dubia roaches, excellent food for a wide variety of reptiles. You guys know Otis, our Eastern box turtle, absolutely adores these. He loves wrecking cities while he chases them. Um, one thing off the bat that's interesting about Dubia is there's no vitamin D3 in them. So that has to be supplemented otherwise, like with calcium powder and stuff. But what what is makes this such an ideal insect to feed? It's very high in protein. Okay. Um, most lizards tend to love them, so they're like really good food source for lizards, especially like bearded dragons, um, lizards of that nature that are somewhat omnivorous or insectivorous. Mm -hmm. They're just a, an ideal prey source. They come in all different sizes, so they get to quite a large size, which is a good meal for a large bearded dragon, and little tiny ones that are perfect for little babies. So you can kind of feed different stages of them throughout the life of uh, a lot of different types of lizards. And then the nymphs are so tiny too, right? The, 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 yep. the really, I mean, I don't think I have, well, there's a real there's tiny a one. pretty small one, I but mean. But there's even smaller. These are just awesome food items. We feed these to everything from Boy George, our panther chameleon. Oh, look at that, is that one? To Otis, our, our Aki monitors love them. These are also really easy to breed too. We were breeding them for, for a while, but uh, I actually went through them. So um, we don't, we're not breeding them right now, but they really, they bred fast and they're, they're able to just like fend for themselves. We would give them fresh fruit and greens, um, some Missouri tortoise diet that they would munch on. Another thing is it's really important that you feed the food that you feed to your animals. So in other words, a lot of insects have very fast metabolic rates, which makes them hollow and nutritionless, especially things like crickets. Like crickets, become hollow and nutritionalists very, very fast because their, metal, their metabolic rate is so high. So it's very important that you gut load them with a good quality food and those fresh vegetables, like you said, you feed your roaches. Roaches and crickets, fresh vegetables, things like that. And there are commercial gut loads that work extremely well too for making these insects more nutritious for the animals that eat them. Right. So, you know, what you put into your insect is what's gonna go into your pet. So you wanna take care of the live food 
that's going to be fed to your reptiles. And you know, one of the most common denominators you're gonna see in this video is the importance of live food. We want our animals, even though they're pets, to act naturally. Okay, we want them to exhibit natural behaviors because instinctively they're always going to be wild no matter how many times we reproduce them in captivity. So by offering live foods, you're triggering those important behaviors. The animal is still able to hunt and in many cases that is extremely important. These probably look awfully familiar to you. These are superworms, a very common live reptile food used for a wide variety of species. What is beneficial about these? They're a much better food source than a mealworm because their exoskeleton is much more digestible than a regular mealworm. So if you have an animal that's large enough to eat a superworm, or you can happen to find baby superworms, you can actually feed those to baby bearded dragons because they're a more digestible food source. The digestibility of a regular mealworm is not as much. So certain animals can digest them well. As you know, box turtles can digest them no problem. A lot of turtles can digest mealworms no problem, but a lot of lizards cannot. So the exoskeleton of a superworm is a much more digestible thing and it's a much better food source as well as a more appealing one to the animal because it's a much more active worm. It moves around and again, it encourages the animals to hunt and it gives them that instinct that you're looking to provide with those animals. Okay, so that's a more interactive food item for your animals because we want to trigger those natural behaviors. So when these things start moving, it gets the animal excited, it's able to hunt it down and take it down, and you know, it's getting exercise when it does that too. You don't want your animals just sitting around no matter what species it is. So if you look at all the product in this particular aisle right here, this is one of the reasons that it makes a store like Major League Exotic Pets so special. This is a fully bioactive aisle. So everything you need to create a natural environment that's bioactive for a reptile or amphibian or even an invertebrate is right here. This is not something you see every single day. So make sure you're supporting stores like this in your local area or maybe you have to travel to them, but whatever the case be, this is what you want to do for your animals. And finding a store that offers you the ability to create an environment for your pet is really important. This beautiful creature right here is a feeder for reptiles. This is the hornworm, which is actually a caterpillar. And one fact I can name right off the bat with hornworms is the captive bred hornworms are the ones that you can safely offer pet reptiles and amphibians. And that's because the wild ones will eat things like tomato plants, which can end up being toxic for your pet. And that goes back to what we we're talking about, what you feed your insect before you feed a reptile or amphibian in your collection can make all the difference. So you don't wanna feed something that might be questionable. So don't go pulling one of these off a tomato plant and giving it to your box turtle or bearded dragon that could lead to a potential issue or even disaster. But Alan, what are, what are some cool things about the hornworm that make it a great feeder? They're uh, very high in protein, okay. but they do have a fairly high fat content as well. So you don't want to feed these as an exclusive diet. Mm -hmm. um, they're good if you're trying to increase the body weight of an animal, or if you're trying to give them a treat, which gives them you know a pretty consistent, you know, it's a good a good substitute diet. You know, something something to vary the diet of the animal. And so a well varied diet offers your animal enrichment, which makes all the difference in properly keeping them in captive management. So I'll say it again, if you are in the Howell, New Jersey area or anywhere within driving distance, make sure you head on over to Major League Exotic Pets, see Alan and his staff for an awesome experience and to pick up the things that you really should be feeding your animals. And of course, plenty of other supplies. Now it's time to bring Unit, the common snapping turtle, into the vet. All right, so we're here at the veterinarian with Unit, the snapping turtle, so that we can get blood work done on him. And the reason why that is so important and why we're curious to see what it might show is because, again, this animal was fed Frisky's cat food for 12 years. He has never had any varied diet, which is, it's amazing that he's even still as strong as he is and around this long being fed cat food. On the other hand, we want to get an x-ray to see how his spine and everything overall looks. We want to make sure there's no blockages in there. We haven't seen him produce a bowel movement yet, so that's a little bit concerning. Uh, we want to take the best care possible of this animal right now so that we can set him up for the best shot at success long term. <laughs> Let's 
there was a turtle in here. What'd you do, unit? Oh, there you are. Hi there. <laughs> People don't give us turtles. We, we don't know what these things are. It's like Otis. There's like something crazy going on inside their heads. You ready? Let's go get a checkup and see how you're uh, doing in there. All right, well, let's take him in there and then we'll just lift him straight up onto the table out of here. Hang on. Hang on. Trying to get this to be happy. And then. Oh, yeah, that'll get us. I'll be right there to. And this is how they can do it from the wall. Yeah. If they didn't have a big, good tail, you could go right here. Yeah. They have a good sinus right there. Yeah. So I can hold the tail for you if you just. Because yeah. it's he's gonna flex it. And all that. <laughs> Man, the power. You, and just, I wouldn't put your arm across his body. And just follow. Yeah, if he moves, it. just follow it. Okay. Like, okay. Just pretend. Right up to. Yep. And try to envision like you're gonna hit the spine. Yeah. Oh good, you got it. Look at that. Get blood, I can't see. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is Dr. Chris Lambert. He's our veterinarian. He's been helping us with a lot of different animals. And if you recall, uh, about a year ago now, yeah. we brought in Chief Brody, the alligator snapping turtle, and he had the opposite issue. He was very underweight, who, by the way, is now making made a pretty much full recovery. Uh, but Unit is the other side of things. He's massive. And there's a lot of fat hanging out the back of him to the point where you can't even really see his legs when he walks. Or actually, let me change that. When he's sitting still, you can't really see his legs. When he starts to walk, that's how you find out that he does, in fact, have legs and feet. Um, he was spoon-fed. Frisky's cat food for 12 years. So what are some of the things that we want to look for in the blood work, you know, that, that might set up a red flag considering his diet? Yeah, definitely. We want to start worried about cholesterol or triglycerides there, mm -hmm. making sure it's not too much fat in that bloodstream. Okay. Kidney, liver function is really important there, making sure that too much, if you too much excessive protein in his diet there. Um, and then checking his white blood cell, red blood cell count. Those are all important factors to see how is he functioning systemically. We know externally how he looks, but making sure that there's nothing internally kind of going wrong with him. Okay, all right, that's good. And then as far as x-ray goes, we don't really know what's going on inside a turtle. Okay, the shell's on the outside. It's part of the vertebral column. The spine is attached in there. So we're just checking to see if there's just any kind of, again, red flag, right? Any yep. kind of abnorm abnormality that might, uh, you know, suggest that there's a blockage or really anything. Yeah, we look, always look at bone density in these guys, making sure that blood work will tell them his calcium level, but we always want to look in these in these x-rays here, um, making sure that cortical bone is nice and bright white, what we're looking at, checking for signs of osteoarthritis because he's so morbidly obese, so you want to make sure those bones haven't had some extra wear and tear where he's already predisposed to that. Okay. I don't see any signs of that for you. It looks phenomenal on these x-rays. We're, you know, kind of tracing those pelvic bones. He's got his GI tract and lungs kind of all smushed into that inside that shell there. It's hard to discern what yeah. is what, but there's nothing in there that I'm too concerned with right now, which is excellent news for him. And we always even go to his shoulders, um, his arms, and what, you know, crazy bones we have there. They're so turned and these yeah, turtles it's, there. That's amazing. Like, you know, he's he's pulled his legs in there and even his, his head, you know, like it's, it's not all the way extended. So it's amazing that they're able to fit that puzzle together. You Literally, know? yeah, yeah. Everything looks great here. No, I can't see an obvious and large heart, but once again, hard to really discern through that, all those okay. bones in that shell there. But it looks pretty good from what I'm seeing right now. All right, so x-rays are good, but based on what the blood results come back as is what's going to determine what kind of course of action we can take, right? Your, your advice and what the results say is what's going to determine where we're gonna go with this turtle. Exactly. Uh, but no more cat food whatsoever. Common snapping turtles are in fact carnivorous, but they're supposed to be eating things like fish, invertebrates. In the wild, they will eat ducklings, uh, but they are certainly not going to your local shop right and hitting up the Frisky's cat food aisle. <laughs> 
All right, so we've got the blood results already for Unit the Snapping Turtle, and I gotta say, I'm a little bit shocked. They're not as bad as I thought they were going to be. His protein, however, is high. That's to be expected if you're gonna be fed canned cat food for more than a decade. But everything that happens with turtles tends to happen slowly. They hatch slowly, they mature slowly, they grow slowly, and unfortunately, they die slowly. So if, if we were not to intervene now and get him on a healthy diet and get him some exercise, things like fatty liver disease and severe muscle atrophy could eventually claim his life. So good news so far, but he does have a long way to go. He is extremely obese, as you guys have seen. So stay tuned because we plan to completely turn this magnificent turtle around.